the mineral topic for organic chemistry in high school. So organic chemistry is the third topic in Form 3 chemistry syllabus and today we shall be talking in details what it entails. So like I like I said today the topic is organic chemistry one. Organic chemistry one, and it's a preliminary topic, like it's the introduction topic for organic chemistry, because organic chemistry is also taught in Form 4 in details. So today we shall be talking about what organic chemistry one entails. To begin with, I uh, shall give the definition of organic chemistry so that you can all get the overview meaning of what organic chemistry is. So organic chemistry, it is simply the study from definition to the study of properties, structure, composition, and reactions of organic compounds. Good. So from definition, organic chemistry is simply just the study of properties, structure, composition, and the reaction of organic compounds. Uh, we are interested to know what are the properties and what's the structure and the composition and how does these organic compounds react. Now, when we talk about organic compounds, uh, it is simply just a group of chemicals. I mean, you know, we have many chemicals, but now specifically organic compounds are now a group of chemicals that contain carbon. So when we talk about organic compounds, we are simply talking about that group of chemicals that contain carbon. And among that group, we have a group that contains carbon, which we call hydrocarbons. So our topic today will measure on hydrocarbons, which is a group of organic compounds. So let me just read here hydrocarbons. Want to see what hydrocarbons are. So like I've said just a second before, organic compounds that just those group of chemicals that contain carbon and one of that groups is hydrocarbon which comprises of carbon and hydrogen so hydrocarbons are simply group of organic compounds they are a group of organic compounds containing carbon and hydrogen only. So, uh, one, at one point, you will be asked to define what's a hydrocarbon. And just remember that hydrocarbons, when you talk about hydrocarbons, they are specifically those groups of compounds, organic compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen only. And today we are going to measure on the three groups of hydrocarbons, uh, which are the main subtopics in this main topic of organic chemistry. And those are alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes. Good. So, as we are going to study, under these three major subtopics, we are going to study the properties of these groups of hydrocarbons, their structures, their composition, and how they react with other uh, elements like the halogens and halides. So, that's what we're going to study under these three major subgroups of hydrocarbons. So, just to save on time, we are going to begin with the alkenes. 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 Now, we want to see how are these hydrocarbons classified? Why are there alkenes and why are there alkenes and alkynes? So, beginning with alkenes, when we talk about alkenes, there are specifically those groups of hydrocarbons uh, whose carbon, that carbon, is linked to another carbon. It's covalently bonded to another carbon with a single bond. This is what I mean. Alkenes, the carbon bond is covalently bonded to another carbon with a single bond. That's why they lie under alkenes. So uh, we shall see that we shall be talking about properties of shall be talking about properties of carbon in alkenes, and we shall see that alkenes are referred to as saturated, the saturated compounds. And the reason why we call them saturated compounds is because this single bond, they have single bond, and that single bond cannot be further broken into any other bond in order to, to accommodate any monovalent or even divalent atom. Like that's the maximum number in which it can be subdivided. So it, they cannot be subdivided further from that.
Good. Let's proceed. So, from definition, I said alkanes, they are group So alkanes are a group of hydrocarbons in which the carbon atom is bonded a group of hydrocarbons in which the carbon atom is covalently bonded to another carbon by a single bond. Good. So, all hydrocarbons in which a carbon atom is bonded to another carbon atom with a single bond will always lie under alkanes. And uh, these alkanes, they always have a general formula in which is CnH2n plus 2. Yeah. Good. Like you're saying, this is the general formula of the alkanes that classifies them under the homologous series. So all the alkanes under that homologous series, they follow this formula. So when we talk about homologous series, we are simply talking about those compounds which belong to the same group that have the same structural formula. And this is the structural formula of the alkanes. They all have this general formula, CnH2n plus 2. So if you want to come up with a name of an alkane or the formula of an alkane, then you need to follow this formula because this is the general formula of alkanes. Yeah. So, said that holom homologous series, they are groups of compounds that have the same structural formula. So, and the structural formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2, where C stands for the number of carbon, this N stand for the number of carbon, and 2N plus 2, it represents the number of hydrogen atoms in that bond. Uh, just for example, if we have one carbon atom, then the formula will be C, because N is 1, because we have one carbon now, N is 1, so hydrogen will be 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 2 giving us 4. So if we have one carbon, we have one carbon, this will come to be our formula. If we have two carbon atoms, two carbon atoms, then we shall have two carbon atoms because N will be two. So hydrogen will be two N plus two, which will be, okay, let's proceed. So let's talk about the characteristics of this homologous series. While talking about the characteristics of homologous series, the characteristics number one, because we said homologous series, uh, simply a group of compounds that contain the same structural formula. So while talking about alkanes, they lie under the same homologous series because all those compounds that lie under alkanes, they have this general formula, that we, which we call the same structural formula. So property number one of homologous series is that they, they all have the same structural formula. They all have the same structural formula. They can be represented by the same structural formula, which is CnH2n plus 2. And those are specifically the hydrocarbons on the group of alkanes, on that homologous series of alkanes. Good. Another second property is that those compounds which belong to the same homologous series, you will realize that they have the same physical and chemical properties. So they, ha they have they have same physical and chemical properties. As we shall be seeing in our next subtopic, uh, that the properties of alkane will always be similar down the group, from the alkanes to the alkynes. Good, that's good. Property number three, which is the property of those groups that belong, or those compounds that belong to the same homologous series, and that one, these ones. The first one, you have said that they all have same structural formula. And like we have seen here, 
in the in the in these examples of alkanes, which we said they belong to the same homologous series, you will realize that all alkanes in this group can be represented by the formula, which is the structural formula C n H two n plus two. Also, we said that they have same physical and chemical properties. All hydrocarbon will exhibit same physical and chemical properties that including their physical color, physical appearance, uh, smell, and also how they react with other elements. That's good. Also, all, all compounds that belong to the same homologous series, they differ with the one adjacent to them with an atomic mass of 14. So we have this unit, which we call it unit CH2. So you realize that a hydrocarbon if they belong to the same homologous series, then the adjacent one will differ with the other one with only atomic mass of 14. And the atomic mass of 14 comes from this unit, CH2, where carbon gives us 12 and we have two hydrogen giving us 14. Uh, for example, we just presented here a hydrocarbon with one carbon and two carbon belonging to the same homologous series of alkanes. So if we find out the atomic mass, the atomic molecular mass of this uh, carbon, or this hydrocarbon with one carbon, it will be 12 plus 4, giving us 16. While this one will be 12 times 2, which is 24, plus 4, giving us 28. So you will realize that the difference, this one is 24 plus 4, that gives us 28. So you realize that the difference will be giving us uh, 28. Yeah, here it was two carbon atoms, Cn, that is 2, then H2n, that's 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 2, that will give us 6. So, yeah, I'm sorry for that. So you will realize that the atomic mass in this first hydrocarbon with one carbon will be 12 plus 4 hydrogens, which is 16. And here, the atomic, relative atomic mass of carbon is 12, and we have two atoms of carbon. So that will give us 24 plus 6, giving us 30. When you take 30 from 16, you realize that because this one is adjacent to this one, the difference of the relative atomic mass is always 14. So that's one of the properties of those compounds which belong to the same homologous series. Good. Good. So uh, most chemicals or most uh, compounds in chemistry, they are obtained by at least two methods. One is the industrial method, and then two, we have the laboratory method of preparing them. So talking about alkanes, let's see their main source or their chief source is the industrial source, and then we shall later look about or talk about their laboratory preparation. How can, how can we obtain them in the laboratory, or how can we prepare them in the laboratory? So first, let's talk about uh, how they are obtained at industrial level. Now. Uh, alkanes, they occur, you can obtain them from, we have a crude oil deposit, we have crude oil, we also have natural gas, and we have a biogas. So biogas can be prepared manually at homesteads, and crude oil is extracted, like it's found as a raw mineral or raw material underneath the ground. So in crude oil, if we carry out fractional distillation of crude oil, we shall obtain alkanes, we shall obtain alkanes. Also, natural gas, and natural gas is simply just a top layer which is found in a, a crude oil deposit. So everywhere there's a crude oil deposit, there's always a top layer comprising of the natural gas. And this natural gas, it always comprises of alkanes. Now, from the crude oil and the natural gas and the biogas, we can obtain alkanes in large quantities, that is at industrial level. And also I want to note that <coughs> uh, these alkanes, they are one of also the main uh, compounds that are on highly demand. So to obtain them, we can carry out fractional distillation of crude oil. We can obtain them from natural gas, which is found as a layer on the crude oil deposit, or we can obtain them from biogas. That is the industrial source of uh, alkanes. Also, we can ob obtain uh, alkanes from uh, laboratory preparation. We can prepare them in the laboratory. We can prepare alkanes in the laboratory. And now I want to talk, how do we prepare alkanes from the laboratory? We're in the laboratory now, at school level, how can we prepare alkanes? So, before now we talk about preparing alkanes, let's first see 
the naming of the alkanes. Because remember, we said that all alkanes, they have a homologous series which follows this formula, Cn, Cn, H2n plus 2. And this is a very important formula because it will enable you to write any uh, structural formula of any alkane. So the formula is Cn, H2n plus 2, and that's the general formula of the homologous series of alkanes. So uh, alkanes, they, they appear according to their numbers. You have different numbers of carbon. So you will find that if we have a have a number of carbons here, and then you shall have the name. Shall just try to reduce a few of them. So if we have one carbon, we have a hydrocarbon lying under the homologous series of alkane with one carbon. So what will be the formula? What will be the formula of that? What will be the formula of that hydrocarbon? So if it has one number of carbon, then it will be C because N is one, so it will be C one. H two times one, which is that one will give us two, then plus two. So in overall, it will be C, H, four. So number of carbons being one, the formula will be C, H, four, giving us the name methane. So methane will always be the first group of alkanes. Now, in naming alkanes or any hydrocarbons, which we talked about here, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, hydrocarbons are given two names. The first part is the parent name and the second name. The second part is the suffix name, which uh, comes from the name of the parent or the parent homologous series. So for example, uh, the first member of the alkane group here with one carbon is methane. Now, methane is the parent name because it has one carbon. So because it has one carbon, it will be called meth. Meth, because the name is methane, we said that the first part which is meth, is the parent name. So if it has one carbon, it will be meth. Meth will be our parent name. And now N, it comes from the uh, homologous series, which is alkanes. So we take the AN and give it to the parent name. We add to the parent name and hence call it methane. So methane will become our, our name of the first member of alkane. And remember, the first name is the parent name, and then the second part, is the uh, suffix name from the homologous series. Okay, let's try to find out the second member of the group of alkanes. So the second member will have two carbons. The number of carbons here is two, so it will be C2, hydrogens, 2N plus two. So it will be two times two, which is four, then add two, giving us six. So the second member will have two carbons and then six hydrogen. So it will be C2, H6 following the formula of Cn, H2n plus 2. Good. So how will we call this? Because it has two carbon atoms, then we shall call it eth. Eth will be our parent name. Eth will be our parent name. Now our suffix name, which is A-N-E, when we add it here, now it will be ethane. So ethane will become our name of the second member of the group alkanes. Remember, the first name is the parent name, and it depends on the number of carbon atoms. Good. So if we have three carbon atoms, the formula will be C, three, then H, eight, and we shall call that propane. And then when you have four, it will be C, four, H, ten, and we shall call that butane. If we have five, it will be C, five, because we have number of carbons is five, so it will be five carbons, and then hydrogen will be two times the number of N, which is five, giving us 10, then plus two, which gives us 12. So we call that pentane. Good. So that's how we name the alkanes. That's the procedure in which we use, or the criteria we use to name the alkanes. Good. So let's go back to the laboratory preparation. The method used for preparing all those compounds that belong to the same homologous series is one. In fact, that's also another property of homologous series. You realize that all members of the same homologous series can be prepared using one unique method or one specific method. So let's talk about the laboratory preparation of alkanes and we shall just uh, uh, pick an example. Good. So.
good. So alkanes in the laboratory are simply prepared by reacting uh, sodium alkanoate, that is sodium alkanoate and soda lime. We prepare alkanes by reacting sodium alkanoate and soda lime. Sodium alkanoate uh, it's simply an organic salt which is obtained by reacting a metal, sodium metal or sodium hydroxide with an alkanoic acid. For instance, if we can react uh, sodium uh, with ethanoic acid, we shall come up with sodium ethanoate with soda lime. Soda lime is a, is a mixture of sodium hydroxide <coughs> and calcium oxide. Now, in this soda lime, it is sodium hydroxide that reacts with the alkanoate. Good. So, when we react sodium alkanoate with soda lime, the sodium alkanoate reacts with sodium hydroxide and it gives us the respective alkane. Let's try an example. If we have sodium uh, ethanoate, we have sodium ethanoate and we are reacting it with soda lime, we shall get methane plus sodium carbonate. So I want to explain to you how this one comes to happen here, exactly what takes place here. So for you to identify or for you to, re to realize what happens here, to understand exactly what happens here, you need to be able to write the chemical equation of this reaction. Uh, because writing chemical equation is one of the key elements in chemistry and it will save you a great deal. So let's begin with sodium ethanoate. How do you write sodium ethanoate? Now, like I said, sodium ethanoate is obtained by reacting, it's just an organic salt, so it's obtained by reacting sodium or sodium hydroxide with an alkanoic acid. And for this case, if we have sodium ethanoate, it means we reacted an ethanoic acid uh, with sodium or sodium hydroxide. So the formula will be because it is from ethanoic acid, from ethanoic acid. So we shall have uh, carbon, we shall have carbon, and then hydrogen here, we shall have three, and then carbon, sodium. So this is the formula of sodium ethanoate. That's the formula of sodium ethanoate. So this one is the alkanoate, alkanoate. This one is the alkanoate, which you shall study it under the organic chemistry too, how this one is formed. In organic chemistry too, we shall be studying how sodium ethanoate is formed because uh, uh, collectively it can be set under a flowchart and you need to be able to write the equation how, this, how they come up with this sodium alkanoate. So when you react this sodium alkanoate with soda lime, and I said in soda lime we are specifically reacting with sodium hydroxide, now this is what happens. Uh, we have here carbon. In this equation we have this one carbon, so this one carbon will come here and then H3. H3. So this is the first part. And then the hydrogen from the hydroxide in the sodium hydroxide, that hydrogen atom, will also combine here, forming four. Because this is CH3 and we have one hydrogen here, so we are adding one hydrogen here. So this hydrogen is lost from sodium hydroxide, or this hydrogen, it displaces uh, this uh, carboxylate group and then it attaches itself here forming CH3. So instead of CH3, now it will become CH4 because this CH4 has combined with this hydrogen now to form CH4. That's what we call methane because our methane, the formula of methane was here, CH4. So it forms methane and then we are left with sodium here. We are left with sodium and then we have two moles of sodium here. We have one sodium here and another one sodium here making them sodiums and then we have carbon and then three oxygen atom which gives us a carbonate. So in general, when alkanoate, sodium, that is a, a sodium alkanoate, it reacts with sodium hydroxide from the soda lime. It gives us methane gas and sodium carbonate. And I have just explained how this reaction takes place. And I'll just repeat. This, uh, the first, uh, this, the, uh, the first part of the alkanoate part here, the CH3, will join with the hydrogen from the hydroxide to form the methane, which is CH4. And now we shall be left with the sodium oxide here. So we have two atoms of sodium, which will join to form sodium. And then we have one carbon left and three oxygen atoms left, which will now join to form sodium carbonate. Good. 
So I'll just uh, delete this. I hope you are together. Good. So the diagram will look like this. So so here in a volumetric flask here we shall have sodium ethanoate uh, which its formula is there shall have sodium ethanoate here reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us methane and sodium carbonate so So we are reacting sodium ethanoate with sodium hydroxide. It will give us methane gas. Methane gas. So let's look at the properties of the alkanes before we write another formula for elaboration. Now, on the physical properties, because every element has its own physical properties and chemical properties. So about the properties of alkanes, we shall begin with the physical properties. Now, on the physical properties, alkanes are slightly insoluble in water, and that's why you can see we have collected them using uh, over the water method. This is called over the water method among the main three methods of gas collection. So, because of its property, uh, which is slightly insoluble in water, it's, uh, it makes us possible to collect it under the method shown, which is over water method. The gas is also colorless and odorless. So, those are some of the physical properties of this gas. Alken, uh, the alkanes, which comprises of the methane gas. So, uh, like we said, they belong to the same homologous series, which is alkane. And these physical properties of methane, it represents all other physical properties of any compound present in that uh, group of alkanes, or the same homologous series, or homologous group. Good. So, one of the physical properties is that it is slightly soluble in water. And if a gas is slightly soluble in water, then it means we can collect it using the overwater method. And then the second one, we have just said that it is odorless and then it is colorless. So inside this reaction uh, chamber, you can be given, this one is sodium ethanoid. You can go in examination situation and you find that in this one, you have been given sodium a propanoid and soda lime. Now just remember that when we react sodium ethanoate, it gives us methane. So when we react sodium propanoate, let's see what it gives us. So like I said, sodium propanoate is just an organic salt, and it's obtained by reacting propanoic acid with sodium. So sodium propanoate, here is sodium propanoate. So we have sodium propanoate here reacting with soda lime here, which is sodium hydroxide. We want to see which gas shall we obtain here in our collection there. So, like I said, we have two carbon, carbon atoms here. So, we have two carbons. Good. And then we have hydrogen, have seven hydrogen atoms here. So, these hydrogens will come here. Because there are seven hydrogen atoms, and we have one hydrogen being contributed by sodium hydroxide, so this hydrogen will combine with these seven hydrogens to form eight hydrogens. And this gas, we call it ethane gas, because it has the formula CnH2n plus one, hence the name ethane, that's plus two, hence the name ethane. That's the 
homologous series name. That's the parent name here. So ethane is given due to the number of carbons, and N is the suffix name which give it depending on the uh, homologous group in which it lies. And because it lies on alkanes, so its suffix name will be AN, meaning that it comes from alkanes. And eth, as we said, it's because it has two carbon atoms. Good. So also, we shall also form sodium carbonate as a additional product from the reaction. So from the reaction taking place, that's what we form. The sodium, the equation is uh, automatically balanced because we have two sodium atoms on this side, and on the reactant side, we have two sodium atoms. And also, we have three oxygen atoms on the reactant side equal to three oxygen atoms on the product side. So if you react sodium propanoate, you will get ethane gas. So if you react sodium butanoate or sodium butanoate, you will obtain propane gas. Oh, that's what happened. So, so you should train yourself on writing the equations so that in case of exam situation, you don't lose the marks on the equation and also identifying the gas. And uh, you see now for the diagrammatic equations like this, it's very important if you are able to write the equation. It's very important if you are ready to, or if you know, to write the equation because the equation will guide you to know the product that's being produced here. Because in exam, they can draw the diagram for you uh, in this case. And then you have a gas here. We have propane gas propane gas here. And now they are asking you to identify one of the reagent here and you have been given soda lime. So one of the reagent that you have been given here is soda lime and now they'll be asking you to give another uh, element or another react uh, uh, another compound that can be reacted to get the soda lime to obtain propane. So you should be able to know that it is sodium butanoate. And also you'll also be asked to write the equation for the reaction which you should also be ready and prepare yourself to know how to write a well-balanced chemical equations on the same. Also, they'll ask you simple questions like, why do we collect the gas using the above method? So you should know that for us to collect uh, a gas using overwater method, it's because the gas is slightly soluble in water. Okay, so that was just on the physical part of alkanes. And now let's talk about the chemical properties of these alkanes. So, like we shall see in the preceding uh, subtopics of the alkenes and alkynes, alkenes and alkynes, they undergo several reactions, chemical reactions, which alkenes don't. And remember, we said that alkenes are covalently bonded to each other with one carbon atom. And for a carbon atom to be stable, it must have four, uh, it must have the four atoms, all or four bonds covalently filled, all of them. So that's why, because this carbon is bonded to the other one with only one single bond or only single bond, we say that it is saturated. It cannot be broken into any simpler bond to accommodate any monovalent or even divalent atom. So, meaning, on chemical reaction, we shall see that these alkanes, they can react with halogens, and that type of reaction, we shall call it, we shall call it a substitution reaction because for them to react with any other compound, it means, or any other atom or element, it means that that element, if it's, let's say if it's chlorine atom, then it, that chlorine, for it to react with this, it will have to displace some hydrogen ions from its position so that it fix itself there. That's why you say that it is a substitution reactions. Let's just give an example. So under chemical properties, We have said that alkanes can undergo several chemical properties, and the first one is alkanes can react with halogens. And talk about halogens, we talk about bromine, iodine, and chlorine. So suppose we have a alkane here. Let's say we have a alkane number three, and that is it has three carbons. We have alkane number three, and that is pentane. That is a propane. So propane is reacting with chlorine. So because let's do the open structural formula. This one have three carbons. So all carbons are bonded with hydrogen for stability, like this. And now, you see, because they have a single bond, we cannot break the bond further to accommodate uh, this divalent atom here. So in order for it to react, it has to displace some hydrogen from this parent compound. So because we have two, atoms of chlorine here, 
it means we shall displace two atoms of hydrogen. So we shall come or shall remain with CH3, CH2, and then C, we have H, and then this chlorine will attach themselves on this portion left by hydrogen uh, to form two chlorine atoms. And then because we have lost two hydrogen, these two hydrogen atoms will combine to form a hydrogen gas. So this is what will be formed. So what is important here is to know how to name the compound formed. That's why we're going to talk about naming of alkanes, knowing how to name this compound formed here. So from the open structural formula, this one, the, its open structural formula, we have a carbon bonded to three hydrogen, then carbon and two hydrogens here. We have carbon and hydrogen, and then have chlorine and another chlorine. Good. Now, this chlorine, they have displaced two hydrogen atoms and detached them, substituted the position which was initially occupied by hydrogen. That's the type of, of reaction we call it, substitution reaction. So that's substitution reaction. And the specific type of substitution reaction which have taken place here is called chlorination. Now, for substitution reaction to take place with halogens, we could, to form halogen uh, alkanes, there must be two conditions. One, there must be UV light. UV light, that's one of the conditions. So for chlorine, which is a halogen, or even iodine or even bromine to react with an alkane to form a compound, there must be presence of UV light. The reaction cannot take place in, in the darkness. So you will see that in examination situation, you will be given a question like this. In examination, you will be given a question. Uh, let's say that is methane. And it is reacting with chlorine. And the condition here is unknown. And you'll also be asked to give the name of the product. So remember, the reaction between alkanes and halogens is a substitution reaction and cannot take place in darkness. There must be UV light. There must be presence of ultraviolet light for the reaction to take place. And when they react, the hydrogen, because we have two atoms of chlorine here, so they will be displaced two atoms of hydrogen and occupy the space. So they will be substituted in that, uh, in that space left by the hydrogen atoms. Initially, we have four hydrogen atoms bonded to one carbon, and then we are reacting with the chlorine. And because we said that this alkanes are saturated, they cannot be broken further to accommodate any monatomic or divalent atom. So for this chlorine to occupy this space here, it has to displace this hydrogen, forming uh, that and hydrogen gas. So how do you name this? How do you name this? So to name a compound first, we must first identify the number of carbons it has. Uh, for this case, this one has one carbon. So its parent name is still just meth because it has one carbon. Because it has one carbon, it's just methane. But then we also have uh, this halogen. We have chlorine and chlorine, uh, which are two atoms of chlorine. And they are all attached to the first carbon, that one carbon. So because it's the one carbon here, we shall call this because they are two chlorine molecules, so we shall call them dichloromethane. So methane comes from the parent name, which is given by the number of carbon atoms uh, that compound contains. And because it has one carbon, so it is methane. Uh, but because uh, it's attached to two chlorine atoms, then it will be dichloro. Because you have two chlorine atoms attached to the same carbon, so it will be two dichloromethane. Good. Also, let's see an equation, uh, what happens when uh, an alkane react with bromine. So for this case, we shall have an alkane. Uh, for instance, let's say we have butane. We have butane and it's reacting with two moles of bromine. That's two moles of bromine. And bromine is diatomic, so of course it's bromine too. So the open structural formula of this will look like this. We have 10 hydrogen atoms attached to four carbon atoms. And because we are adding, because see here, bromine is diatomic. So it means this bromine has two 
bromine atoms. But then the, the mole, you have two moles here that they exist as two moles. That means we in total you have four bromine atoms. So for these four bromine atoms, for those these four bromine atoms to react with this butane, they'll have to displace four hydrogen atoms. And these four hydrogen atoms will be substituted with the bromine forming this now this one has been substituted by chlorine and then this one has also been substituted by chlorine chlorine and the four hydrogen atoms that have been displaced will come here and also form two moles of hydrogen gas so how do we name this so to name this we begin with the side in which the halide is attached and the halide is attached on this side uh, so we just uh, identify the longest carbon chain here so we have how many carbon c atoms we have one two three four so the parent name will be butane because we have four we have four carbon atoms so the parent name will be butane and then we have three chlorine atoms attached to the first carbon so on the first carbon we have three we have three chlorine atoms attack to the first carbon yeah and then on the second one we only have one we only have one chlorine atoms so this one this one it simply uh, it represents or indicates the position in which the halide is attached to the carbons so one it simply indicates that we have a chlorine attached to the carbon number one and then also another to the carbon number one and another to the carbon number one and then two indicates that we also have another halide attached to the carbon number two now in total we shall have how many chlorines we have four chlorines and to represent that number of chlorines we use the words like di uh, tetra or tri so because here we have four so it means that we have one one two tetra tetra means four tetra chloro butane because butane is the parent name. So butane is the parent name. Good. So that's one of the chemical properties of alkanes is that they also undergo a substitution reaction by reacting with other with other halides to form halogen alkanes. Another property of alkanes is that they burn in air to produce carbon four. Alkanes burn in air to produce carbon dioxide and water. So hydrocarbons, all hydrocarbons, they burn in air to produce oxygen and water, carbon dioxide and water. But for this specific group of hydrocarbons, the alkanes, remember we said that they are saturated. So I want to remember this for the sake of practical. When we burn alkanes in air, they burn with a blue non sooty flame because they are saturated. So they burn with blue and sooty flame. So that's one of the properties that is uh, uh, visible. When you burn the alkanes in air, you'll see that they'll burn with a blue and sooty flame. For example, suppose we are burning here a butane. We are burning butane. We are burning butane in air. So it's reacting in oxygen. So it will form carbon four oxide and water. So this that one will happen if the quantity of oxygen that we are burning with is in excess. This excess oxygen. But what happens when we burn it in limited oxygen? If we have limited oxygen, remember, because they're just still alkanes, because, because they're still alkanes, they just burn with a blue non sooty flame. But now in this case, they will produce carbon two oxide and water. So that's what happens when alkanes burn in air. You need to remember that they burn with a blue non sooty flame. And then the last thing on alkanes, is their uses. You will also be asked about the uses of alkanes. Now, remember, examples of alkanes said you have methane, and uh, methane is widely used in the at homes for cooking. So that's one of the application of alkanes they are using in homes for cooking. We also have this same same alkanes. Yeah, we have methane. Methane is used. Methane is used in homes for cooking. It's used as a fuel in cooking at homes. It's used in cooking. Good. That one is used in cooking. Also, these alkanes, uh, they are sources of hydrogen gas. 
when they're broken down during the cracking process, they produce hydrogen gas, which is used in hydrogenation. So apart from knowing the method of preparation of alkanes and their physical and chemical properties, also remember to look at their, uh, their uses, because that's also examinable. So that will mark the day of the end of the today's lesson, and let's meet for the next class. Uh, yours, it was Mr. Byron. So have a nice day.